this place real? That depends. If real is what you can feel, smell, taste, and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Pikachu, I have in my hand two pills. You take the blue pill, and the story ends now. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the Diglett Hole goes. But be warned, dive too deep, and you may never return. and then lose a significant amount you know it's one of the reasons i'm i'm i, I i'm very scared of the high end you know the, the high end mm -hmm. even if i even if i was extremely wealthy the high end freaks me out because the the amount of people who who are spending in that space is so small that you mm -hmm. could have a, a a small exodus of just a handful of people and the high end market is is lost you know because yeah. there's just not enough demand so then the prices are gonna are gonna crash and it just it doesn't seem like a safe space to me at all I like just like Brian says here, the hundred buck to five hundred bucks per card on long term, like that's safer. Like a, a, a kind of card that if it did go down, the floor isn't necessarily crazy low, and it's not like putting you on the street. <laughs> you know, like maybe maybe if the cards go down, you have to buckle your belt a little bit, like you know, eat a little bit more instant noodles for lunch a couple of times a week. <laughs> you know, like but but it's not going to change your lifestyle in any significant way. <laughs> yeah, I um. And some of the major people, I mean, people talk about the sports card investor. He, he made a video where, um, you know, he's made a lot of money from owning a lot of different businesses and, and things such as that. And, you know, he's probably, he could retire if he wanted to um, right now. Um, so it's one of those things where um, he said he has like 20%. I think that's the most I would, if, if I was going to have like a, a huge part of my net worth and collectibles 20 percent is the max like yeah, 20 percent is the max I don't like that i could do that much that's really pushing <laughs> so uh, I, I like the idea of investing you know like there was the there's this concept of back at the time of the gold rush you know that that the people who invested in in the 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 gold mining processes and 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 buying the gold mines like every like some people struck it rich and became you know generational wealth but most of the people who were really succeeding through that were the ones who set up the businesses to support the people who were taking the risks you know the people selling yeah. the shovels and and selling you know opening the restaurants in the in the in the mining places like in my mind the the more that's even a a healthier space is just to 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 figure out how to support people in their in in what they're doing and not necessarily like you know throw all your money into this risky space like i i like to in, invest in in cards like and, and to look for opportunities arbitrage opportunities really like is what i'm is what i would be looking for more like not necessarily you know just seeing what what's available that that i can get for for a decent price you know if it's if it's for myself or it's for or if it's for selling i want to find the, like the arbitrage possibilities not not necessarily the risky plays the risky plays are not they're not they're not attractive to me <laughs> um where how how low do you think a lot of high-end stuff is gonna go because uh we'll, we'll say like this is kind of starting to become more vintage now but let's say the 1986 fleer jordan car psa 10 uh i guess the highest that ever sold for psa 10 just for the base car because there are some autos that sold for a million but like um like high gray autos 750k but... or something was the highest yeah yeah, like 850k for one, and then the other ones were like 720k, and there's quite a few that were like five, 600k. So uh, I recently sold for 174,000, I think, uh, which I'm not surprised. No, I'm not. I'm not surprised. Because how many people are spending that much money? How many? How like what's the what's the demand you have like a dozen people well, probably more than that but you don't have a whole lot of people who are who are yeah. going to be willing to spork out spork out hundreds of thousands of dollars on a card so I, it's just i don't know how low it's going to come but it just it doesn't make a lot of sense to me as a, as a space to 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 focus yourself yeah um one one reason I kind of made a little bit more critical content, just because I I understand like geopolitics, uh, quite a bit. I guess hobby champs, um, which is something. But like, um, and 
I just know like a recession is going to be coming in 2023. Um, I just kind of just look at demographics and just some macro factors. And no, that doesn't mean like people aren't going to stop collecting, but I think people are going to be budgeting more, right? If you're spending a thousand dollars a year on cards, it may turn to five hundred or two fifty or whatever. Yeah, and you start yeah. going to lower end stuff. Um, that's why. I, that's why I feel that hundred dollar, two hundred dollar, three hundred dollar, like whatever the conditions of the of the global economy are, there's gonna be people who still want cards, and those cards are not crazy out of reach for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the other thing is uh, Europe is going to be in trouble um, where it's just not as going to, it's not going to be as wealthy and things aren't going to be as great. You're going to have some energy crisis, crisis issues. Germany is kind of the heart of manufacturing. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail about all this boring stuff, but it's like, um, a lot of people in Europe aren't going to have that disposable income because people are talking about, oh, international market. Um, for many places, the international market won't be big for a while. I'm not saying it, it will never be there, but um, it's just so many countries around the world are just having financial problems. And it's going to take a while to kind of get through that. Um, and probably America is going to be one of the first countries to do that. And uh, from certain experts that I listen to, they're thinking 2027 when inflation is really under control uh, and then they're able, we're able to manufacture and be really productive and really grow the economy the way it should be grown. Um, so it's going to be a, a tough time. Um, and, you know, that mania phase, not just for sports cars, but for everything. Crypto, I know people do crypto, stocks, real estate. It's, it's just not going to be that lucrative. Um, and I think you're going to see a lot of, um, people get frustrated and leave the hobby. Um, yeah, I think it's already happened to a certain degree. Yeah, it's already happening. And I think it's one of those things, um, a lot of people probably thought they had, they're going to have more of a financial gain, um, from this stuff. And, uh, people are like, there are so many other prospects in my regular everyday life that I would just want to put more time to. Yeah. Um, I think, I think that what, that's a big point. Cause I, f I feel a lot of the people who entered it were entering, you know, there's, there's all this big focus uh, on side hustles, you know, like, like so many different little things that people will do for, for side income aside from their job. And I think people were really approaching the hobby as a side hustle. Um, but then when they realize that, that, you know, by on an hourly rate kind of thing, this, this is not a good side hustle. There's so many better ways, you know, that if, if that's your, if that's what you're really focusing on. Um, so I, I feel like a lot of the, a lot of people kind of, kind of stepped away. And as you can see too, like hobby champs mentions here that even a lot of the content creators have disappeared over, over the past little bit of time. Um, and, and thank you, by the way, I hope you two stick around. We'll, we'll stick around. I'm sure we will. Um, because it's from a place of interest and not just type exactly that for that reason. But I feel like, you know, I think that's also a repercussion of this. You know, people kind of had a certain expectation, whether they were content creating in the space, whether they were, whether they were, um, you know, just getting into cards themselves. There are certain expectations and those expectations are, are, are not are not met. So a lot of people kind of kind of step outside or even if they maybe they become more fringe involved, which is also mm -hmm. not a problem. You know, people could be involved in the hobby, but at the edges of the hobby, which is which is great. You know, that's one of the things I love about the hobby is you can come in and out. You can you can be more involved at certain times, less involved at, at certain times. You can, you know, based on what, what you're doing, there's nothing that's unless you have an actual business business in the space. You, you can mm -hmm. come and go as you please and, and be as, as engaged as you, as you want to be in different, at different times. And, and there'll be times when you want to, you know, like, like I've been on, on, on Com C recently, I've been having so much fun flipping cards that I'm finding for like 35 cents and selling it for 65 cents just for mm -hmm. fun. Cause it's just so fun. <laughs> so mm -hmm. like there's different ways to be involved in, at different, at different times. Yeah. Um, the other thing, I think a lot of stuff is going to kind of uh, be consolidated more. Um, all these spaces where people are selling cards, we kind of mentioned this about Fanatics. Um, like you have my slabs, because I've tried selling on other platforms outside of eBay. And most of the stuff I send to Probstein, because I'm in Connecticut. So it's like 
uh probe scenes in new jersey but it's like a 45 minute drive i can literally like drive over and just drop everything off um and i've done business with them so much and i don't like shield bit my stuff if, if it's so low so low but like um it's one of those things where it, it was just very convenient for me to like sell through them um and i've tried my slabs i've tried um i've tried all um, all this, if you're trying to like do buy it now type stuff, there's just not as much traffic. Um, and even if you, cause all it gives you a range of what it should be worth. So I try to sell it for like 80% of what it's worth or whatever. Cause the, the fees were supposed to be two and a half percent. They're raising the fees now, but, um, yes, a lot of people still aren't trying to buy it. Like people are very, very, uh, careful now um before if you, you put some 80 percent of like comps it'd be gone like that so so it's like one of those things where um the the mindset has changed which is good i think less people are gonna get hurt but also um a lot of these selling platforms i like the ideas of less selling fees and things such as that so it's like easier to transact um but I don't see many of these because you can also sell on PWCC. You can sell, I mean, the sports card shows. Um, you have discords yeah. and Instagram. Like you have so many ways of buying. You mentioned Com C. Um, there's like pristine auctions. There, there's so many other places you can buy and sell cards where, um, and then when Fanatics are fully up and running, they probably have a website you buy and sell from them directly. Um, I don't know. And it just takes time trying to maneuver through all these websites. Yeah, um, that's true. And you know, the thing that was just coming to mind as you were saying all of that, cause you were talking about like how it would be nice if some of the, cause like eBay, for example, you know, their, their fees are, are, are quite high, really very high. And, but, and, and you would hope that, you know, with more competition, maybe, you know, they, they'd, they'd be able to, you know, different people would be competing to bring those prices down. But honestly, I think the more competition in the, in the, in the market actually might make the seller's fees not come down at all because there's not enough supply, you know, for, and there's not enough people buying cards regularly. You know, you, I look at like Starstock, for example, and how, you know, their business model failed because they just weren't making enough ongoing money. You know, they were, they were trying to make money it, it, when, when, the, when it, the spike was going on and there was like ongoing, like so much buying and selling happening on the platform and they, they got their little transaction percentage each time because there was so much movement, they could keep their, they could keep their fees pretty low and it was okay. But as soon as the market slowed down, like their business model couldn't work anymore. Cause it was, it was based on like a constant, constant movement. So now, you know, I, I worry, like, if there's too many spaces to buy cards, like, it's hard, if, if, if it's cards exclusive, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, it could be hard for them to sustain a long-term business model if their seller fees get too low. So I, I worry that some of the, some of the different marketplaces, you know, if, if they are only in cards, if they'll be able to maintain their my slabs, you know, could be one that, worry, you know, I worry a little bit. Are they going to be able to maintain? Maybe, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah, um, there's a bunch of other places that people buy. I use whatnot, and there's other places people are buying and selling cards. Um, I haven't used whatnot, but um, yeah, I, I've just tried like my slabs and all. For some stuff it may be kind of useful, but most of the stuff it's like I might as well just send it to Probsing or, or literally sell on eBay because I'll probably end up selling it quicker. Um, and in the ways, a lot of stuff, cause I got everything back from PSA. Like I, I literally got back like hundreds of cars, like almost a thousand cars from PSA, uh, like a month ago. Um, I'm like, wow. Like dishing some of this stuff out. And it's like, um, a certain stuff I'm going to keep long-term just, just cause I like it. And then, um, a lot of stuff is like, I don't know why I was like sending this stuff in, <laughs> Uh, but it's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, you technically, for some of the stuff you actually may make more money selling on eBay with the higher fees than some mm -hmm. of these other, cause the volatility of the market, um, and then it could just sit there for less than comp for a long time. 
um, unless you're like trying to promote what you're selling, um, which could look weird because it could look like you're pumping and dumping too. Mm. 